No, it is. Uh, Mrs. Deborah Thomas, you're the grandmother of um, Kia. of Keon uh, Cook, who is uh, being held on uh, uh, charges uh, connected to an alleged terrorist threat. My grandson is not a terrorist. Yeah. Can you tell me more about the problems that he's had that uh, you were talking about a juvenile detention when he was held in solitary confinement? Could you go more into that? Well, first of all, I'm going to say Keon behavior started after the death of his mother in 2011. And right after his mother's death, they took that boy over the top. He couldn't, he couldn't cope with it. So on top of that, his behaviors acted out. He did minor things. Like I said, Keon didn't kill anybody or rob anything. Now, as far as what uh, is this terrorist thing? Keon is not a terrorist. Now, I called the police that night to come out and get my grandson. He was talking out of his head. And was he putting stuff on Facebook? Was that the idea? At, well, the Facebook thing I had seen prior earlier than that, you know, yeah. and I didn't really think anything about it. But when he started talking out of his head and his brother was recording him because he kind of thought it was funny what he was saying. And I went into his room. He was sitting there like somebody was in the room with him. He was talking like somebody was just sitting there with him. And there was and nobody I said, else. Nobody was in there with him. I said, Keon, what's wrong? I'm talking to them. I'm talking to them. I said, who are you talking to? He said he was talking to the television. I said, Keon. That's when I told him. I said, uh, somebody going. But anyway, make a little story short. I knew something wasn't right. So I called the police. Police brought the ambulance. When she walked in the house, she asked, was everything okay? He said, yeah, you okay? I'm okay. But I still knew something wasn't right with him because the way his behavior was. And so on top of that, she wasn't going to take him out of my house. So I gave her what my grandson had recorded. And then I showed her what he had placed on Facebook, not to get that boy locked up, but to get him some help. That boy had been in and out of the, uh, the um the rehab hospital, which keep him only six days. Keon went in at this time. They kept him five days, sent him home, and that's when they came and arrested him. Keon has been in there since April, in and out. At least about, uh, he got out in April, but since... And that, that was Gateway, was it? Gateway. And, and what kind of stuff was he saying on uh, uh, Facebook? Can, do you recall? I don't recall. But it, it, was it anything alarming or... Well, it got a little alarming. That's why I showed her, you know. But, that, I, but you called uh, the police, though, right? I called the police. Yeah, you know, I seen the message, but I'm I'm not going to go into it. Okay. You know, I seen the message, and it was a little alarming. And so I I was the one who showed them the Facebook page. And uh, you, you expected them to take them to, like, rehab or something? I expected them to take him to the rehab, which they did. And he stayed in there for five days. And then when he got out there, arrested him. Keon hasn't taken his medicine in two months. And he uh, has been diagnosed with schizophrenia? He I was believe. first diagnosed with PTSD after the death of his mother. Yeah. And then once he got into the detention center and they held that boy in isolation, that's when I figured that the paranoid schizophrenic came out. Because my grandson did not have paranoid schizophrenia before he went into that detention center. So do you believe your grandson was dangerous at all? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. As long as Keon on his mask, he's sweet as gold. Okay, very good.